Hello, um, my name is Kuhn Christians. I'm from uh, Sako Brewery and uh, now we are in uh, Goik and in this place we're gonna br uh, uh, make our new uh, brewery. Uh, we when did you start and why did you start? Uh, I start in 2016 and it was like hobby. My, my wife uh, she gave me a little packet for uh, brewing at home and then it started and uh, it was uh, in the beginning a hobby and now it's uh, full time. And you're almost. originally, Kun, you're originally from this area? Is that why? I'm from uh, this area, I'm a uh, Payotant, yes. Yeah. And so Payot. you were well infused with the spirit and culture of Goes, Lambics? I uh, grew up in a farm in the middle of Payotaland and when I was young they drank uh, Lambic and uh, that's why it was uh, interesting to do it back to, uh, to try. And to you try. saw the revival now. Yes. Do you uh, think entering now with so many new gurseries and breweries and lambic makers that it's a very competitive market now or do you think there's still room for you and your concept of what I, it could be? No, I think uh, there is place enough for everybody they want to make goose because if you go a little bit farther like uh, there is place that I, I want to say everybody in Payotaland they drink they like goose and they drink goose but farther than Payotland, there is place enough for everybody because not everybody drinks there, but we have to show him. And then uh, that's why it's better that more breweries, more, it's uh, for tourism, for, it's better. It's, we're going to put the goose, uh, what Frank Bone already did before us, we, we have to continue. continue yeah. You originally started as a blender, or did you start doing your own? No, uh, I I start directly brewing. Yeah. Not blender. Right, and it was uh, so you had your own little cool ship. Yes, yes. The the first there, it's uh, two hundred liters uh, vessel, and now three thousand liters. <laughs> Uh, how much do you have in stock right now? You moved from your, it was your home that you were at originally home, I, I, At home, uh, in, in the cave, uh, 6,000 liters. And in where we come from now, uh, there we have 90,000 liters. Wow, that's uh, a good uh, amount. Yeah. Uh, so uh, here in the new big place, you hope to expand or do you hope to maintain at the same level or production? I think triple. Triple, you're going to triple. Yes, we have to maybe in a few years, maybe they're going to take five years, but I think triple like uh, 3,000 uh, hectolitre. What kind of styles do you like? I mean, there's the hard, uh, there's the bone, the soft, uh, it, what's, what's your, what do you characterize as your style? Uh, we like not too much sour, a little bit, and a lot of uh, wood and, and a character. Not uh, not too soft and not not too sour. I don't like uh, too much when it's uh, uh, too much sour. It's <laughs> <laughs> you wake up in the morning. With yes. That <laughs> Uh, uh, you said you might start supplying, or you, perhaps you already are, other blenderies or goods makers. Is that also part of the plan? Because there's a, you know, most of the people they're getting it from either uh, Oud, Oud uh, say Bone, or or uh, Drifontaine now, or Timmermans, I think, or Linda, you know. Yes, well, we want to help the what we say the stakers. Huh? Uh, it's uh, also an old, uh, li like, uh, they have to continue uh, and then they need word from other breweries. We're going to make word for other breweries, uh, for other stakers, they, they can come to us. Right, and uh, 
About how much of you sales are outside of Belgium right now? Not too much. It's almost inside. It's almost inside yes. of Belgium. Yes, we live a little bit in Denmark and uh, Holland, but not so, not so much. It's more inside. And to gear up to the much larger production tripling, as you say, will you have to bring on more people? Are you the only brewer right now? Uh, we uh, are uh, Willem and me, two brewers. Normally it's enough. And then we need like Timo for the sales and maybe two other guys for helping. But there are a lot of people that want to help. <laughs> Tell me a bit about William. Uh, you know, his pedigree goes back to Decam. So, how did you team up with him? Uh, William was. Uh, he saw at my home in Bogarden that I make beer. He stopped. He was uh, uh, on his way with his bicycle and he stopped. He's, and he said, Ah, can I go inside? I said, But my wife was there. Said, my wife said, No, no, tomorrow Kuhn is there. He come back. And that start, and you know we are to, uh, from then to always staying together because we have the same vision, and then that. So he wants to get back into brewing again because he started the cam, then he gave it over to Carol, and now I guess this keeps his hand in brewing because but mostly he's a consultant for helping other breweries yes, build. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So it's a good teamwork, I guess. Yes. <laughs> uh, he start in the cam uh, like a staker eh? and Karel uh, did it with Karel and but then at that time he had a lot of work in uh, he was in Poland, Palm, Rodenbach too much and then he said to Karel you have to do it uh, at your own I, I have to stop because it's too much but now he's a uh, pension and, and so he, he do time. he want to do what he want to do yeah. what he like brewing. <laughs> uh, what's your vision for Sako? I mean, it's made a big hit in Belgium. Uh, we you know I tasted it for the first time at Zitos two years ago, and it was just astounding that here is this new uh, brewery, goes brewery, lambic brewery, sorry, and it's right out the door. It was producing good lambics. Uh, what do you attribute that success to? Yeah, the, it's our passion, and if you put your passion in the beer, then you make good beers. If you see, yeah, it, you like it, and then you make good beer. Passion in and and I guess taking care of the details. Yes, also yes, important. yes, yes yeah. it's important, and that's what uh, William me he tell me always. You have to do pay attention for this. Do like that. He knows it how to do it, and that uh, and that you have to do, and, and then you make good beers. Uh, when do you hope to move completely and into here? So also, yeah. also Frank, he say, Frank Bone, he tell to me, if you have something that not good, open, <laughs> throw it away. That's. I was there. Lots of those. Throw no, no, no. Some, no. It was. I have it once. It was a mistake, but I say okay. Yeah. It's sometimes you do a little mistake, but it was like 1,500 liters. It was not that hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't no, hurt that it, much. <laughs> it was too sorry, and I and said no. Just, okay. Yeah. Well, that's good it. advice. Yeah. So uh, I guess it, is it in six months you hope to be completely moved into this new place? I hope to that we can brew in March. In March. I like three, uh, three, four, four yeah. months. Yes, uh, uh, five, four, five months. Yes. And you also make regular beers. Is that it? That your in yes, in I create two, two other beers in the beginning, but if you do the two styles like uh, um, Kulter mm -hmm. and uh, Spontan, it's too difficult because uh, you can have infection from the other. Ah. And then. It's too. Uh, it's too dicey. It's too too chance. Yes. So you're going to stop with and just mm. focus on spontaneous. Yes, we're going to focus. But everybody likes the beer that I create, like Bogarden yeah. and Monik, and we ask another brewery to help us, and they say it's okay. We want to brew it for you. Okay. Yes, so it'll continue. Yes. 
All right, so in a year, uh, you hope to ramp up production and hope to have the customers to do it. And well, good luck, and we hope to see you in six months or whenever and see this place transformed. Yes. Much thank you, Kuhn. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for talking to me. <laughs> Next. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.